tissue, the tissue that's here is a tomato and Arabidopsis stems. Um, either will work, and you can either cut them with the razor blade to the size that you want, or you can use scissors. This is important. This is the cryomatrix. You want to make sure that there's no air in the tip when it comes out. So I don't know if you can see it, but if there's air bubbles in the tip, you're going to have air bubbles in your sample block. And near the top. Recap and seal it with parafilm when you're done. You can use tweezers, but I use a really fine gauge needle in order to put it into the matrix. When loading the sample, you want to have the cutting edge on the bottom. So what you're going to cut into will be this side right here. So the orientation of your sample is really important on this point. So it needs to be very flat and flush against the bottom. Now this part's really tricky because when you put one in, the other one moves. You can see they're kind of flush with the bottom. And they're ready to freeze. So to get the samples frozen, we go to the menu selection at the Peltier station, press enter, and right now it's off. We want to move it down so that it's on the cool setting, and then press enter. What that does is makes this block reach ultra freezing temperature really fast. When we put our samples onto that block, the polyethylene glycol and sugars that are in the matrix will freeze solid within a couple of minutes. I give it about 15 minutes so that they're really as solid as possible. You could also do this step on dry ice. To mount your sample, you don't want to have any bubbles in the tip of the cryomatrix because that will make a weaker bond. Put a nice thin layer. And this is room temperature. And then our sample is here. So as it pops out, this is the side that's going to go down onto the, I call the chuck. And then use your tweezers or razor blade to press it down. And you can see your sample mounted in there. And then we put it onto the Peltier station again, and remember you have to go to the menu, turn it on to cool, and press enter and you will see freeze active, because it only goes for about five minutes. And then we're gonna wait until it's solid, and then we can mount it and we can do the cutting. Sampling your tissue, you can do in your lab on dry ice, so you don't have to do it actually in this room. You can buy a number of different cryo molds that come in different shapes and sizes. We like this one. Um, if you have a bigger stem or something, you could use that. Um, this allows you to process a lot of samples at one time, freeze them on dry ice, and then just store them in the minus 80 until you're ready to use them and ready to cut. Or you can do it one at a time, which uses this setup, which is something that comes with the actual um, cryotome. What you would do is pour your cryo matrix into this weighted circle, 
pour the cryo matrix in, put your sample in, and then hold it down with this weight. This is pretty hefty. Hold it down with the weight, and what that will do is form a perfect mold molded directly to the chuck. And then when you're done, you remove the weight, and you pop open this because it has a little rubber band. And then it will hold, your, your sample will be mounted directly to the chuck.